just had it black, but they were like, no, 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 we need all the painted lines in there. So, <laughs> all right. And uh, if you take a look here at the street sign, they wanted this too. <laughs> so not only will a student get a plot of land, uh -huh. they'll have a street name, and eventually they'll even have a street address, which is what these bars are here for that we're going to eventually fill in with numbers. So someone could tell you that they live specifically on this street at this number, you can go check out their house. Um, so is this something the students created themselves at the moment? This is sort of where, where, where they're at. Yeah, so. yeah this is, um, so basically, like I said, they only have enough um, enough money that they earn based on what they perform, how they perform. So um, students, because they don't just get materials for free from any world, they have to go purchase this stuff. So they've actually made very careful decisions about what they want to make um, and what they thought was important in their house. So of course, we're still at the beginning stages, but... You can you can imagine that after the end of the school year, they've done you know uh, multiple multiple lessons. They'll have enough money to actually have a house, possibly refurnish their house, and maybe renovations, add a back porch, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, basically, personalizing it for themselves. So it's it's almost like creating their own sort of internal economy. And, exactly. Uh, uh, and uh, can they can they trade sort of? Yep, they're more than. Um, I tell them that they're more than. You know, it's it's more than acceptable for them to trade. You know, if they want to help out a friend and things like that. The the only rule with that I say is no whining afterwards. I don't want to hear any. You know, oh, but he didn't. It's not fair. And okay, but that's a personal agreement between you and that person. It has nothing to do with me. So, um, and it, it has worked out really well so far. So there's not been too many arguments, discussions, things like that. So. Um, there was a student over here on this side, I think, if you can check out these ones over here with the trees, they, they kind of circumvented the system in a sense. Um, not cheating per se, but they were taking, of course, they bought a tree and they bought some bone meal. So, of course, they decided they would just bone meal some trees and get lots and lots of wood. <laughs> so I, I explained, you know, it was, a, it was a teachable moment. So I took this student aside and I explained to them, like I said, that is completely fine. It was within the game mechanics uh, to do that. But do you feel like you're going to, you know, do you, are you going to feel that you got the most out of the, the experience if you do it that way? And all of a sudden you have a house with everything in it and nobody else does. You didn't really do any lessons to get it and stuff. So he, he agreed and he only asked, um, you know, he just basically said, Mr. Ostland, is it okay if I at least just plant a tree and let it grow and then I can chop it down? And I said, that's fine. That's completely fine. It's interesting, actually. I just noticed this as I'm looking at it right now. Mm -hmm. The So these green circle blocks you're looking at down here, those are EDU blocks. So essentially, students cannot build anywhere on this map except on those green dots or green circles. Sure. So like, for instance, if a student were to try to dig right here, nothing would happen. It would say, you can't dig here. I just noticed that when he was bone mealing, he, this tree overgrew into the area where he cannot build, so he cannot cut this down. <laughs> I just realized that. So I'm like, why is this just squared off here and not cleaned up at all? Oh, because oh, yeah, he, he can't do anything it. to it. So, <laughs> so I'll have to go clean that up for him later on, probably. But so that's why I guess he did the second tree smack in the center of his house. <laughs> so he could get all of it. So. It's, a, it's all um, but, a learning experience, isn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, but definitely. Um, even even his concept of bone mealing and growing a tree, it's incredibly resourceful if you think about the game of Minecraft. Okay, so I told them they could buy materials in there. You know how many of them just rushed to the wood store to buy wood planks? This student was thinking outside the box. Mm -hmm. Not only that, he will get food from this. He will get other saplings, and he will just have a. Rest he basically has a sustainable tree farm right now. Yeah. Now. Granted, it's going to be a lot slower than if he was bone mealing, but incredibly resourceful, incredible problem-solving skills right there compared to, say, somebody who spent all their money on some stone bricks maybe and a bed, but this isn't going to gain them anything yet, right? Sure. So um, anyway, just very clever, I thought, uh, now that I'm looking at this and thinking what I'm trying to think of his thought process and what we, what we talked about. So here's a very interesting house, actually, I was going to mention to you. So, um, so you see this guy here. He got couple of cobblestone blocks and a bed and pretty much probably spent all of his money i'm guessing <laughs> um this student here see most students went for the oh i want to make the biggest house possible first shot uh -huh. she decided to go ahead and make a small house that was completely enclosed for her stuff oh, wow. okay. right so she has a house uh -huh. with bare minimum you know a bare minimum house and she will probably eventually renovate later on 
to make your house bigger. So another thought process, yeah, what's more important to you? So prioritizing your purchases. Um, I did have one student say, I'm going to buy an ocelot in the pet store. <laughs> and then quickly realized that if he put the ocelot down, it would just run away. <laughs> <laughs> so he declined to buy the ocelot after that. So, But it was an interesting discussion um, you know, of that kind of stuff. So here's another one who decided to build a small house first uh, and combine the tree idea. You know, oh, and he's using the furnishings in there. Look at that. And so, some uh, pressure plate. You know, <laughs> yep. Definitely a little more advanced builder here. Some glass window behind you. So he definitely used his materials or his money that he first earned to the maximum, I would think. Um, and that's all a learning process. You know, at first, they'll do this kind of stuff and realize, oh, I built a row of wood logs. I could have made each of those four pieces of plank. I could have four times as much wood oh, by doing this. So, um, oh, here's our bank, by the way. Um, we we can exchange coins in the bottom level. So kids can take a um, a gold coin and make it into ten, uh, I forget what the one below there is, silver coins, I guess, and, and such and such. So they can learn to pay things properly. And before we head into the classroom, this is a system where I pay them from... Um, so at the beginning of the class, what I'll do is I'll, I'll have graded their homework from the previous week. Uh, I'll give them each kid a score from three to zero based on how many they got correct and were able to explain in their journals. Once they're done that, if you fly up here, the kids will get dropped in. I'll teleport them into each one of these categories here. They'll step on a pressure plate, and then they come back down here and open up this to get paid. So um, the pay system is, and again, it's still in the works. It's still in the progress. I'm kind of trying to see how we can do this a little more automated. But for now, the difference between me handing out coins to each student and them doing th doing it this way is way faster. Um, you know, so uh, the the crazy mechanics. I don't know if you want to see it, but if you uh, turn on your build menu um, and then kind of fly down through the floor here. You can uh, take a good view of the mechanics below the basically the circuitry and the programming that we've done underneath to make all that work upstairs. So all of this powers that that fairly s simple function upstairs. It's yes. Simple. Yeah. Yeah. So these are all test for items. Um, a lot of if then statements and and things like that um, within the scoreboard system. And this is not a mod. This is straight within Minecraft EDU. It's actually even within regular Minecraft as well. But it's so underused, it's, it's amazing. Uh, it, it provides so much power, collecting data from students and then doing something based on that data, you know, enabling doors, um, giving them items, you name it. You can do anything. You could give them experience points, take away experience points. Um, the, the, the possibilities are just, uh, it's, it's only limited by what you can think of, right. basically. So all, all these, um, blocks as basically sort of logic circuits and and it's almost sort of object orientated programming i suppose isn't it yeah so, exactly yeah um we do want to eventually get students to this level maybe our, our grade six or our uh, basically our 11 year olds mm -hmm. trying to get them to the point where they can create something like this even something very simple so um so could, yeah could you see using something because something weird looking at the moment is using um scratch in some of our primary lessons is this something that you could see as using that as an alternative to um, that, just to get the students yes, thinking about definitely. it? definitely. Yeah. Um, Redstone acts an awful lot like, um, like pro basically like a programming language. The Redstone itself, you know, is, of course, the wires. Um, then there's boosters, which are these comparators with the two knobs on them. And then there's these, or sorry, that's the repeaters. And then the comparators are the one with the three. Comparators basically are the, if this is true, light this up and then light the next one up sort of thing. So it's an if then statement basically is what it is based on whatever this command block is in front of it. So, um, Edu Elfie or, or, uh, Stephen Alfred is, um, a good friend of mine and he, he and I work on these things, these kind of projects late, late at night because Australia time, my, uh, you know, his normal time for playing is like 11 o'clock my time mid or near midnight, okay. but we'll sometimes stay up on the weekends and just, you know, think tank stuff like this. Um, so how, so how, long I, it, how long would it have taken you to put this together? Sort of? Um, this took us, of course, he's got two kids as well as I do, so it kind of that interrupts, but it took us almost the whole weekend to tweak this and, and, you know, get it to working the way we wanted. And then once this stuff works, trying to figure out how to, okay, now how do we get it upstairs into four small little boxes? 
you know, that's of course the uh, the end result, right? Because you don't want this big ugliness out here. So what I what we came up with was the original idea we came up with was how do we can we create a payment system that on the above ground it just looks like a bank machine, right? Right. And that's essentially what we've created is four bank machines with all the wiring underneath the town. <laughs> Nobody ever knows it's there. <laughs> so that, that's essentially what programming a, a, an application is. Isn't it? it's sort of, exactly. You hide all the code behind it. Which uh, mm-hmm. be as simple so, as possible for the user. So you're looking at your GUI interface right here, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And then upstairs, of course, nothing too special, but it is um, safety deposit boxes upstairs. So the kids can go in. That's a, using a, the custom NPCs mod. It's a role. And uh, the kids can stuff put stuff in there that they want to keep safe, and nobody else can get to it except them. So, Fantastic. yeah. All right. So let's head on over back to the classrooms here. So, um, if you kind of look over here off in the distance, you'll see that we made our our lower field doesn't actually have a parkour map in it. <laughs> we just decided to use the big empty space to teach people, new players, how to play Minecraft. So, but new and new and experienced, I'll actually run them through this the first week. Um, the first time I see them for the year, we'll run through this. And then within the cafeteria, if you come on in here, this is more of a uh, crafting tutorial. So how to craft basic things. Um, the kids thought it was very clever. So if you want, you can come get lunch in case you're hungry. <laughs> um, so we start out with how to make a plank out of a wood log because that's the very first thing you get in Minecraft is a wood log. <laughs> and then from there, a crafting table, sticks, oh, sorry, tools. I'm <laughs> oh, that's okay. okay. We can always fix that later. <laughs> um, yeah, and so basically just a learning tutorial here. Here's some uh, pretty familiar guys to me. These are the this is the Edu Crew people. Um, oh, there's, Matt. there's you at the front there, right? Yep, and there's me right there. Yeah. Oh, look, I'm looking in a mirror. <laughs> and that's so are these, are these people you you work with within your school, or they're? they're um, oh no, this is a worldwide thing. So Rick is actually uh, in Pennsylvania. Uh, he works for Temple University. Edu Elfie works for a school in Australia, and Matt is in New York. It's quite a global thing. Right. I am absolutely shocked. And then, of course, the developers for Minecraft Edu that I work with a lot—they're um, in Finland. So <laughs> it's very, very interesting the the dynamics. But it's amazing that we can all be in such geographic different areas and get a, so much done. I mean, yeah. All right, let's let's head on off into the classrooms. So, so.